Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. In an ideal world, the revelation that Susan Rice deliberately unmasked the names of Trump transition team members would provoke some self-reflection, some consideration that maybe, just maybe, letting a political appointee spy on her ideological foes almost without restriction could be a poor idea in a democracy. But we're not in an ideal world at all. So instead, all the talk is about election hacking by dastardly Russian saboteurs. For whatever reason, the, uh, the hard right has always chosen Susan Rice to be their villain. Not only was Russia behind the hacks, that was widely reported, but that their purpose was to help Trump. This attack that we've experienced is a form of war. It's, it was a, a form of war on our fundamental dem democratic principles. It's amazing that in that small, relatively small campaign, small circle, so to speak, that you would have so many people with so many deep connections to Russia. My impression is uh, I wouldn't be surprised after all of this is said and done that some people end up in jail. They're going to jail. Well, despite the hysteria, it looks like the Rice story is here to stay, at least for a while. Today, President Donald Trump suggested Rice may have committed a crime. Rice's spokeswoman described that as ludicrous. Well, Matt Miller once ran the public affairs office over at the State Department, rather the Department of Justice. He joins us now. Mr. Miller, it's good to see you. Good to see you. So we've had, I think, every night for the past three months a debate on this show on the facts of the case. And I'm agnostic. I think Russia probably wants to do bad things to the United States, always has. But I try to debate, you know, like, what do we know? And we still don't know anything. And so what I'd like to ask you about tonight is the psychological component to this. Is there a purpose for Democrats to make all policy discussions about Vladimir Putin and Russia a purpose beyond just sort of answering why they lost? I think the purpose for Democrats, and I would hope it was the purpose for Republicans and, uh, as well, is to find out what happened. Right. I, I think the biggest question that remains unknown is was there collusion between the Trump campaign or right. Trump associates and the Russian intelligence services? That's a question the FBI is investigating. It's a question one committee in Congress is investigating well, and another has fumbled its investigation. I think that's the, the, the real reason. Okay, but the, the, but the Mounties, what you just said right there, the Mounties are on the case. I mean, you've got the FBI, and I presume you're not suggesting they're in the pocket of the Trump administration. Um, and you've got the congressional committees working on this. So we sort of, you know, it's in good hands. But the obsession with it, okay, well, if you think the FBI is corrupt, then I think, just I think, say so. I, I wouldn't say Devin Nunes is invested But, okay, but the, the, the Department of Justice is on this, yeah. okay? So you'd think that we could just stand back and say, we'll find out, and, you know, we can make a judgment then. Instead, you have, well, you just saw the montage we ran. You've got one congressman, the ranking member on the Intel Committee, saying that people are attacking Susan Rice implying because they're racist, or they don't like women or something. Then you have another member of Congress saying he knows exactly why Vladimir Putin did this. He's in Putin's head somehow. Then you have a third saying this is a form of war, like we're declaring war. And then you have a fourth saying people should go to jail. Talk about you getting over your skis. You, this is a psychological condition at this point. They don't know anything that we don't know, and yet they're calling for war in jail. That's crazy. I think we know that the President of the United States is under a federal criminal investigation right. into whether his campaign colluded with the Russians. That is potentially the most serious scandal in American history. Yeah. We know that the President of the United States in the campaign said things very favorable to Russia. We know that as President, he equated what happens in the United States with, with Vladimir Putin's you know, murdering of, of journalists, murdering of dissidents. I mean, even if there was no collusion, what, what the, the president okay, so has he's, done to endorse said a is dumb thing. But does that mean that he's in the pocket of Putin? So today, his administration indicated in public, out loud, that we're ready to go to war in Syria. That is directly at odds with Russia's central foreign policy aim right now. Yes. Now, look, that may be a good idea or a bad idea. I happen to think it's a bad idea. But that's not doing the bidding of Vladimir Putin. That's the opposite of it. And yet Democrats are so addled with this insanity, this conspiracy. They don't even recognize that's happening, do they? I think what we're addled with is a desire to find out what happened. But what do you make that of that? What do you make of that? Hold on. If Trump is doing the bidding of unseen Russian saboteurs and Vladimir Putin himself, why in the world? Would he be attacking Russian involvement in Syria today and threatening war? Well, first of all, let's wait and see what happens. Well, after what he, just, let's, well, course, let's wait and see what happens with what he said like today. But, let, but let's not ignore the fact that several days ago his administration said getting rid of Assad is no longer a priority. Something, you know, it, 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 a huge reversal okay, but, of U.S. But I'm policy. I'm talking about and then, and then several, and then, the papers today. And then Nikki several Haley days later, today. lo and behold, okay. Assad has the green light to gas his own people. Look, if your point is they're inconsistent, that's a fair criticism. If your point is he's doing the bidding of Vladimir Putin, you're insane. Do you see the difference? No. 
Yeah, well. Uh, How is this doing the bidding of Vladimir Putin? So, it's the opposite so, of what So Putin this wants. is this one isolated thing. If you look at this, it's not isolated. It's the biggest look, deal in the world. If you look at today, today it is. If you look at the pattern of Trump's behavior, his his repeated calls for uh, the breakup uh, of the European Union with with um, uh, the United Kingdom leaving the EU, with his uh, playing footsie with nationalist parties in France, with his undermining uh, our, our, our uh, ally Angela Merkel in Germany. All of those things are things that Vladimir Putin wants. Those are things this that are part of the global political This is why you're starting to freak agenda. me out. And I have friends who are Democrats who are rational, high IQ people who make the same point, And they sound like LaRouche followers. They take things that are not connected and string them together into this theory of everything. Are you really saying that anyone who's in favor of Brexit or is suspicious of multinational organizations like NATO or the UN is on Putin's side? Of that's, course not. That's unreasonable. Of course not. Okay. Of course not. I'm talking about all of the troubling pattern. Look, if these were just uh, if these were just Donald Trump's isolated policy positions, and there wasn't this history of, of uh, contacts between his campaign and Russian intelligence services. Again, we don't know if there was collusion. It's being investigated, but we know that the FBI has found contacts between the campaign. If we didn't have uh, Donald Trump in public in the middle of the campaign calling on the Russian intelligence services to find Hillary Clinton's emails, if we didn't have his campaign okay. benefiting from a Russian intelligence uh, uh, operation, then we might sit back this and This sounds go, like yes, a vast conspiracy, and I'm trying to take you seriously. I really do try to take this seriously because, again, I'm not a supporter of Vladimir Putin's, but you're alleging a conspiracy so vast that it undermines, as you suggested, the foundations of our democracy. Now, there are thousands of Russian citizens living in the United States, heavily concentrated in and around New York City. They potentially pose a security threat. Do you believe we should intern them? Until such time as we find uh, that they don't pose a threat. Of course not. What do you mean, why that's of course silly. not? Of course why is not. It silly? That's, that's silly. That's absolutely silly. Why? This uh, is, that, this is that, an, if there are unseen Russian actors seeking to undermine because, the United States don't, of America. Don't, because we don't put people in prison that we cannot prove. No, we turn them and we have done it before. And the Supreme yeah, Court has said it was, it was fine. The, and it was one of the biggest embarrassments well, and the worst. I know Democrats in supported history. it then. That's, so my question is if you really. Then should we take action militarily against Russia? If they're trying to undermine our democracy, why wouldn't we attack them militarily? No, we shouldn't take we shouldn't take military action because we don't want to start World War III. Well, but they've um, already we started. Do, Wait, but hold on now. I just played the video. Ben Cardin, who's your senator from Maryland, said this is an act of war. We're already at war, according to the Democrats, so why wouldn't we make it formal? So uh, I don't think it was an act of war. I think it was an act to uh, subvert, to undermine our democracy. I don't think it is, it's, it's uh, you know, I don't think the next thing to suggest is that we go into nuclear war. Well, look, I don't, I don't I do either, think, but then I'm not a Democrat. The, I think we need to get to the bottom of what happened. Uh, and that's a, a, and, okay. and stop and stop, but we stop are side shows as you know, Devin Nunes has tried to do, Donald so Trump has tried to everyone, do, and get back into, into. So there's only room for one line of inquiry in America. So anyone who says, "Wait a second, why did Susan Rice, a political appointee, spy on members of the Trump transition?" It's a legitimate question. Oh, you're doing the bidding of Putin. My but, question, though, is. What does this have to do with the last election? So Hillary lost for a lot of reasons. Maybe Russia was one of them. I don't know. But the Democratic Party needs to figure out how to win the country and how to serve the country. So this has nothing to do with, like, the opioid crisis or the wage crisis or income inequality, which is real, or automation. Is anybody on the Democratic side spending any time thinking about those things and uh, not just Putin? Of course we are. I think it's possible Where? to I do more it. than one thing at a time. I think it's possible to go back and work on a message for the next election. I think it's possible to focus on uh, uh, solving the opioid crisis on a number of things. At the same time, I don't think we should ignore the fact that the, the President of the United States might have quoted But we're not power. ignoring it. It has consumed all the oxygen in every newsroom in America, and the FBI and the congressional committees are on it. So here's my question. And it's not a non sequitur. The opioid crisis is killing 10 times the number of people the crack crisis killed. I don't hear anybody, and, and by the way, Republicans too, anybody in Washington behaving as this as if this is a civilization ending crisis, which it is. Instead, they're talking about Russia. I think it's frivolous. Do you agree? I, I would disagree that the president of the United States being under federal criminal investigation is frivolous. May, maybe you don't think that's important? Look, the purpose I, of political parties is to serve their voters. And the Democratic Party lost millions of people who had voted Democrat, but then stopped and voted for Trump. Has there been any group of smart people sitting down, this Comey, Russia stuff, you know, let's put it aside, and thought deeply about why didn't we appeal to them? What was wrong with our message? Does anyone think of that? Yeah, so I think you're equating two things. I think on the political side, yes, there absolutely is a conversation we need to have about how to win the next election. 
separate apart. The, the concerns that we have about Donald Trump are, are serious concerns about the, the government of the United States and whether it was subverted by a foreign power and whether there are people in the, the White House who had close ties no, to, I know to the what president. it is. We do Mike it Penn, every example, night. There's just, about whenever them. I talk to someone about this, that, there's a, this lack concern. of blinking that freaks me out. And I really feel like you're going to sell me the Bhagavad Gita and give me a flower or something. No offense to you, Matt Moore. Thanks for joining us.